Hey, what's good, self-direct investors? I hope you're all doing great, and I want to welcome you back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan. I'm the mind behind Make More Capital, and I'm coming at you with a special episode because we just got the news that we wanted to hear, and the Safe Banking Act will be reintroduced uh, into Congress tomorrow on Thursday. So we're going to do a quick video of that and Green Thumb Industries' recent Q4 earnings that they just released. So before we jump in, if you enjoy this video or you learn something, please just leave a like on my channel or on the video, sorry, as it really helps my channel, and then subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. Now, I've yet to read this, so uh, bear with me. We'll go slow, but Congressional Cannabis Banking Bill will be reintroduced on Thursday. So a bill to protect banks that service state legal cannabis businesses from being penalized by federal regulators will be refiled in the House on Thursday. Multiple sources confirmed to marijuana moment. Now, this makes me just think like, okay, so it's got to go through the House again on a vote. And it's got to go through the Senate. So hopefully this doesn't take too long, but it just reminds you how long these processes do take. So this is great news, though. This is what we wanted. Uh, Re Representative Earl Perlmutter and a bipartisan group of co-sponsors will be reintroducing the legislation titled the Secure and Fair Enforcement Safe Banking Act. Uh, the measure cleared the House along largely bipartisan lines during the last Congress, but it did not advance under the, uh, in the Senate under Republican control because Mitch McConnell would not let it. So with the Democrats now in control of the House, Senate, and White House, industry stakeholders are hopeful that the legislation will stand a solid chance of becoming law this year. So again, just to emphasize, realizing that these processes do take time, uh, but safe should come sooner than later uh and the hopes are because the bill is it was, has already passed it's already in there they're familiar with it so hopefully they haven't changed it too much but the safe banking act would ensure that financial institutions could take on cannabis banking or cannabis business clients without facing federal penalties fear of sanctions has kept many banks and credit unions from working with the industry forcing cannabis firms to operate on a cash basis that makes them targets of crime and creates complications for financial regulators uh, and as more states have legalized cannabis uh, for recreational medical use banks have relied on 20 2014 guidance from the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network that requires them to submit suspicious activity reports they elect to provide financial services to cannabis businesses. And in the years since, a number of depositors or depositories taking on cannabis clients' clients has gradually increased, uh, potentially in hopes of the safe banking passing previously, uh, until a more recent downtrend uh, that seems now to be stabilizing. And this was in a previous article that, that, that they've done mentioning that uh, there are about 500 or so banks in the u.s working with cannabis companies but in the in the u.s total there are 4500 banks so a large percentage are not you know 90 percent are not working with cannabis companies but when that this gets lifted there's plenty of business to be had if they choose to do so uh, and also with credit the uh, the credit credit unions i think it was uh, and only 150 work with cannabis companies there are 5500 credit unions so these cannabis need companies need a you know a line of credit uh, or a loan like any other business that's what they should be able to get and then the head of the irs also said last month that the federal agency would prefer for state legal cannabis firms to be able to pay taxes electronically as the current cash-based system under prohibition is onerous and presents risks to workers so again all these solutions with just one bill um former treasury secretary forget about him uh it did go through the 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 house last time but declined um, oh, so this is saying that it, how it wasn't introduced uh, into the two pieces of coronavirus legislation. You know, that is unfortunate, and we were hoping that that would happen because of the the Democratic majority. But, you know, again, it, at least it's being introduced now. Um, and, you know, the, the thing that we have to hope going forward is that Chuck Schumer just says, okay, you know, we've passed safe banking, but this is not the end of the road. We have to continue with reform. And he said this in the past, 2019, um, but, you know, the hopes are that they, they will get this done or they'll get this through. And I think the, the few things to add, I've mentioned this one before, Jerry Nadler, uh, Marijuana Moment kind of just recycles all the good points so that, you know, when you're reading the articles, you can remember, which, which is nice on them. But for now, the American Bankers Association says it's important to advance cannabis banking reform. So, when, you know, when the banks are behind you and want this done so that they can get a piece of the pie, you, this is going to get done at some point. You know, matter of when, not it. While the group doesn't have a formal position on broader reform, it said in a letter to Perlmutter and other sponsors that the new version of the Safe Banking Act on Wednesday that the cannabis financial services issues uh, issue has become a challenge for so many of our nation's communities and the banks that serve them. So this bipartisan Safe Banking Act would be an important step towards enabling financial services for cannabis-related businesses. They wrote, the Safe Banking Act is not a cure-all for the cannabis banking challenge, but it is a measure that helps clarify many of the uh, many issues for the banking industry and regulators. So the hope is, of, well, of course, uh, then these companies will be able to uplist 
uh, these banks can and credit unions can work with them without fear of federal intervention now, and they will stop paying that 280E tax and that safe harbor clause, which will give investors, especially big investors and institutions, the ability to invest without the fear uh, of the federal government intervening as well, just getting that on paper, making sure that's out there and in writing and set in law, because big money investors are not going to do that unless it's set in law to protect them. So, uh, good news, Green Thumb Industries reports their record revenue, uh, 177.2 million, up 133.8% from last year, uh, Q4 2019, and up 12.8% sequentially. So we're just going to jump down to the goods, go through that first uh, before we jump up. Now this is sort of the the accounting wizardry. Uh, I'd like to just stick to the cash flow statements or the income statements for now. But what we have, um, so up from last year, December 2019 to December 2020, 177 million up from 75 million and what we can see is that they've increased their gross profits by a tremendous amount which is awesome to see green thumb industry good job run by ben kovler kovler the ceo who i featured in some videos for gross profit of over 100 million of that 177 million and so after their sell their sgna they have a positive operating income as well of 47 million which is quite huge uh <laughs> for the, for this industry as well to set it apart um and a positive net income of 22.4 million or 11 cents so you know they could be paying dividends at some point in the future if they choose to do so obviously um that's more for mature companies and whatnot in this industry still young and getting started but like this is awesome <laughs> you don't see this out of some of the bigger LPs that have just promised a lot and, and unfortunately underdelivered. But if we compare 2019 to 2020, the full year, from 216 to 556 million dollars, gross profit of from 107 up to 304 percent. Um, and again, you know, losing 27.6 million, uh, total profit this year of 106 million. That's pretty impressive all in all. Um, and so for the entire year, Net income of 14.9 million uh, and positive seven. So still profitable. Still, uh, this is just impressive. And um, it's just nice to see this out of Green Thumb. Now, if, if you're invested in Cresco, you might be thinking, well, what, what I'm basically thinking is I'm hoping next week Cresco can manage to beat Green Thumb's numbers, um, you know, because 16% quarter over quarter growth for Cresco next week is not too much to, to dream for um, when, when you see this. Nonetheless, this is fantastic. But uh, just as something of I, I'm, what I've seen is you know Green Thumb and Cureleaf, they they obviously they obviously do have a lot of costs that come with running so many dispensaries, right? So whereas Cresco Labs has only twenty or so, and they they focus on that wholesale approach, we will we will end up seeing if that was really a smart advantage or not. Uh, and plus, we're going to see Cureleaf next week. But again, these numbers are just fantastic, um, and so they do have uh, cash on hand, eighty three million to cover. Um, well, they have enough current assets and cash to cover their current liabilities if they needed to do so. Uh, still, unfortunately, a little bit, uh, a good deal of intangible assets and goodwill on here. Um, but uh, all in all, obviously, they, they do have enough assets to cover their liabilities. Um, and they are just showing really strong growth and they're profitable. So like that that's what you want out of a cannabis business. We've been waiting a long time for cannabis businesses to to kind of show that you, you can you know operate profitably so having this news coming out with safe banking has just been the perfect day. I know I put my video out too early, the, the previous one, but so let's let's check out what they managed to do as well. Uh, their retail service business development for Green Thumb. Their fourth quarter revenue included sales from 51 retail stores across 10 states, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And the company opened 11 new stores during 2020. Um, quite impressive, again, given the context of the year, uh, you know, a pandemic and a recession so it's a strong strong industry stronger than most people uh, would be willing to admit so don't sleep on cannabis comparable sales growth stores opened at least 12 months was 60 percent on a base of 32 stores driven primarily by increased transactions sequential quarter over quarter comparable sales were up six percent on a base of 48 stores retail revenue increased sequentially by eight percent quarter over quarter driven by increased foot traffic so that's a good sign to see people buying before christmas as well in the holidays i imagine that was a big part of it during the fourth quarter and subsequent uh, to quarter end green thumb expanded its retail service in Pennsylvania, Illinois, Florida, Connecticut, California, and New Jersey. Um, you know, so again, expanding their footprint, uh, and as they execute more and get their systems in line, they'll be 
hopefully cutting operating costs. Um, and main thing though are going to be these these states like Illinois that have recently legalized for adult use, New Jersey, which won't have sales up yet until next year, but um, you know, great, great uh, developments for Green Thumb as well. Expansion of their consumer packaged goods business. It seems like their brands are now uh, available, distributed to 12 states as well. California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And so just think as well, New York is next up to legalize for adult use, as is Pennsylvania. Uh, and, you know, we see from Illinois what happens when you legalize adult use uh, and, and open that floodgate. So gross Branded product sales grew sequentially by approximately 31% quarter over quarter, driven primarily by expanded scale in production and distribution of branded products. Um, they're continuing to expand, uh, and again, as we see, it's not costing them any more money than that's needed. Seems like they got some money back from a uh, transaction with uh, I double IPR. So, you know, that's always nice to sell some property in order to get that back. And what was the one thing I wanted to come back to? Gross profit. For the fourth quarter, 2020 was 100.5 million or 56.7% of revenue compared to 40.6 million or 53.6% of revenue for the fourth quarter of last year. So do not sleep on cannabis gross profits. That was This is huge from Green Thumb. And for the full year, gross margin was 304.2 million or 54.7% of revenue increasing 5.2 basis points versus 2019. Cross margin performance was driven by increased scale in the consumer packaged goods and retail businesses. So seems like they are, you know, hopefully foot traffic will pick up uh, as, as people, you know, as cannabis sort of normalizes, people return to stores, people get shopping again, uh, hopefully maybe a few more stimulus checks. Uh, for, for consumer sake. But all in all, I wasn't going to go through all of this, but uh, a lot of it's already been covered. So it seems like their current assets are 183 million with cash equivalent of 83 million. Total debt outstanding is 99 million. So they do still have to pay that off. Um, and 300,000 of which is due within 12 months. Or wait, 99 million, 342,000 of which is due. Okay, 342,000 of that 99 million due in the next 12 months. So obviously they can pay that off. But Fundamentally, we see them profitable. Uh, that is a great thing. And the last few things I wanted to highlight, just because they're doing more than um, just making money uh, and, and showing that cannabis can be done professionally. They're investing in communities and team well-being. So Green Thumb is working to ensure the health and safety of its frontline team is actively uh, advocating. Of course, they're taking their precautions. They're donating, it, they donated, sorry, its first day profits of new retail locations to local charities as part of its mission of giving back to the communities in which it serves. Uh, they're Dog Walkers brand created the Bailey Legacy Fund to support animal rescue organizations to expand upon its funding program of donating a portion to of Dog Walkers brand pre-roll proceeds or a portion of Dog Walkers brand pre-roll proceeds to local community animal shelter programs. Uh, they've announced the expansion of its Leap Social Equity Opportunity and Support Program to include a cannabis business incubator intended to enable success for new entrepreneurs in Illinois, which is awesome and great that they've been expunging records like. That, that's a that's an amazing thing to see with them doing uh, green thumb launch an integrated awareness campaign including a short documentary waiting to breathe in partnership with the last prisoner project a coalition of cannabis industry leaders dedicating to bringing restorative justice to those most harmed uh, by the war on drugs at least i think it was green thumb it might have been cresco that was helping expunge records but still seeing this type of investment in community you don't see this from big alcohol brands or tobacco brands or you know it's just this is leadership. So Green Thumb announces key partnerships and scholarships granted to students for programs at the Cleveland School of Cannabis in Ohio uh, and, and the Olive Harvey College in Illinois to support industry diversification through education because education matters. So yeah, those are the main highlights, folks. Um, definitely a great read through if you're a Green Thumb investor, but this makes me even more excited for True Leaf to release their earnings on March 23rd and then Cresco to release theirs on March 25th, Harvest to release, release theirs on March 30th. Now Harvest will not have sales from Arizona legalizing recently. But again, nonetheless, just awesome to have this coming down the pipeline on the eve uh, or on top of this news of the cannabis, uh, of the safe banking bill being reintroduced. So hope you guys enjoyed this update. Uh, glad to see, hopefully this will reverse the trend upwards too. And uh, more attention will be paid back to these 
severely still undervalued companies. They've been on sale, so hope you've been taking advantage. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, do you think it's going to take a long time from where we're at? Let me know, but regardless, make sure you've got cash in your checking account to, to pay for your living expenses for the next while and just so that you don't have to touch your investments. Sit good and hold tight. Uh, make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed this video, folks. Subscribe if you want to see more like it, and I will catch you on Sunday for this week in cannabis. Have a great evening, everyone.